Wow, I am so grateful for the kingdom partners that we have. I so love worshiping God and especially worshiping God corporately. Well, I'm excited. My wife and I are here today and we're going to actually be finishing up the series that we're in. But before I do, I want to remind everyone that's connecting with us live that if you were connecting with us live, we would love to meet you. Come and hang out with us. And we've got a Zoom meet and greet. My wife and I would love to connect with you. We also have a Zoom group discussion. We'd love to hear all about how God is using this message in your life and how you can encourage others. If we haven't had a chance to connect with you, we'd also love to invite you to fill out a connection card. And if you need prayer, let us know how we can pray for you. And if you haven't had an opportunity to give, go to our website. And there, there's an opportunity for you to be generous as the Lord leads. We so appreciate those that have given up their tithe and our offering. We appreciate you. Well, we are in a series called Welcome Home, and it's uh, focused on Luke 15. Uh, and before we get started, I want to pray. I want to invite the Holy Spirit in so that we will speak what he wants spoken. Let's pray. Father, we just welcome your presence here. We welcome your presence wherever the listener may be, God. But you open the ears of the hearer, God. And may we sow seeds of the word and may they reap a hundredfold harvest in return. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And so we're going to begin with the, the, the first verse, because this really emphasizes the whole point of this series. The, the parables that we've talked about in week one, week two, uh, and last week and today really are in response to uh, what took place beginning in verse one. Let's read. So we've been reading out of Luke 15, and it starts in verse one. Now all the tax collectors and sinners including non-observant Jews who were coming near Jesus to listen to him. Both the Pharisees and the scribes began muttering and complaining, saying, this man accepts and welcomes sinners and eats with them. You know, we we're talking about like being in an environment where there's a sign that says open, Yet the people present seem like they've got enough. Like mm -hmm. for them, they might as well put a sign out front that says lot full. Like we've got our four. And no more. And no more. <laughs> you know, and it's heartbreaking, you know, especially when you're talking about religious leaders, people, men and women of God, that our job, what God has called us to do is to mm -hmm. be his ambassadors and his representatives. So in response to their heart, uh, Jesus is letting him know that, it, hey, of course I accept sinners, mm -hmm. people like you and people like me. Of course, I welcome sinners, people like you and people like me. And of course, I would be seen in public. I would eat with sinners, people like you and people like me. And so as we move forward in this series, I want you to remember that the whole purpose of these parables was actually in response to the heart and the murmuring that took place from the Pharisees. Jesus understanding their heart, he says, you know what, I'm gonna tell you a parable about the father and sheep. I'm gonna let you know about the good shepherd. I'm gonna let you know why I came, that the 99 sheep were safe, but I still was looking for the one. He says, I'm gonna tell you another parable and let you know about the value that sinners have in my sight that I've got these nine coins, each one in equal value, but I'm missing the one, that the ones that are present and the one that is missing have equal value to me. And then to bring the whole point home, he says, I want you to know that, that I'm telling this parable about those that are gathered at this table, but I also want you to know about those who seemingly are in the church, who are seemingly about my business, but I want them to be about my business from my kingdom perspective. And so last week we spent a great deal talking about the, the, the first child that we see, the child that left the father. Uh, and today we're gonna talk about the child that stayed home. And, and so with that, we're gonna pick up in verse 25 and read right there in the parable where Jesus picks up telling us about the son or the child who stayed home. Now his older son was in the field and when he returned and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. So he summoned one of the servants and began asking what this celebration meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe mm. and sound. That's so good. 
But the elder brother became angry mm. and deeply resentful and was not willing to go in. And his father came out and began pleading with him. Mm. But he said to his father, look, these many years I have served you. I feel like he was pointing at him. I have served you and I have never neglected or disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me so much as a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this other son of yours arrived, who has devoured your estate with immoral women, you slaughtered that flat, flat, <laughs> fattened calf for him. <laughs> the father said to him, son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. Wow, so I love God's response there. It's so powerful. But it was fitting to celebrate and rejoice for this brother of yours was as good as dead and has begun to live. He was lost and has been found. Wow. You see, this is why we call this the parable of the lost children, because last week we focused on the child who left and it was clear. And, and the, the son who stayed home is clearly articulating the sins of, of the younger brother. Uh, but right there, God is giving us a picture. He's exposing uh, the temptation or the problems that can arise in our own hearts when we feel like we're all about God's business. And so what we're going to talk about now is, is what we as children who find ourselves at home, we have to resist the temptation of becoming, number one, self-absorbed. Mm -hmm. You see, the, the, the younger son was self-absorbed. The younger child was self-absorbed when he's when he told his dad, look, give me my inheritance now. Like, I can't wait for you to die. Uh, but here we find in verse 25 that the, the older brother was also self-absorbed. It says, now his older son was in the field. And when he returned and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. And so he summoned one of the servants and began asking what the celebration meant. I want you to think you you are living in your house and there's a party happening. Right. right? <laughs> and you don't know what's going on. You see, the heart of the father, what we saw last week was when the son was far off and he was returning home. The father was looking for him and he ran toward him. And so at this day, the whole house was waiting for it. And you see, the servants are there letting him know. He says, and he said to him, you're brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has received him back safe and sound. You know, we did a series on safe and sound, and it's a picture of what that actually meant, that the son came back to his senses. He realized that it's better in my father's house. And when he began to march home, you see the picture of the father running to him. The question here is, is why is this brother so self-absorbed and not right there with his father running towards the younger one when he came home? And the answer is he was self-righteous. And, and you see this right there in verse 28. He says, but the older brother became angry and deeply resentful and was not willing to go in. And his father came out and began pleading with him. But he said to his father, Look, these many years I have served you and I have never neglected or disobeyed your command, yet you have never given me so much as a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But but when the uh, this, this other son of yours arrived, who has devoured your estate with immoral women, you slaughtered the fatted calf for him. As my wife said, I, I believe he was pointing at his dad. He was so angry. He was mad because in his mind, in his heart, he's thinking, how could you? Do you know what he said to you, dad? He wished that you were dead. He couldn't wait for you to die. Give me my inheritance now. And here I am serving you. I'm out here in this field and I hear music being played for this guy. Oh, you got to be kidding me. No, I'm not going back in there. And then he goes on the deeper step here of self-denial. 
You see, he responds and, and, and it says right here, to give you a picture of his self-denial. He's saying all these things. You never did. You never did. But let's go. Let's go back. In verse 12, when the younger son inappropriately said to his father, give me the share of the property that falls to me. Wait a minute. So he he divided the the estate between them. So you're telling me that the older brother benefited from the foolishness of the younger son. And we know from Jewish law, what, what's the, the divide? The, that the older son gets? The older son gets two thirds. Two thirds? Yeah. And the younger son gets a third since it's two of them. So, so you mean to tell me the denial is so deep that he forgot that the estate was divided and he got his, his share when the younger son said, like, he, he's upset and, and he goes on, he goes, but the elder brother became angry and deeply resentful and was not willing to go in. And his father came out and began pleading with him. Why is he having to plead with him? But he said to his father, look, these many years I've served you. I imagine he showing his dad his hands and I've never neglected or disobeyed your command. You see, I'm not. I won't pretend to be a grammarian, but I've got an issue with that. If we go back to 28, he says, but the elder brother became angry and deeply resentful and was not willing to go in. And the father came out and be began pleading with him. So that's a present tense pleading with him. That, that means even more so than a command, but a loving invitation. Come, son, come. But he says he, he refused to go in because I've served you. You see, he was in self-denial. He forgot the fact that when the estate was divided, he received his share. And right now he is disobeying the father's mm -hmm. will. Yeah. The father's inviting him in. Mm -hmm. This reminds me of a story um, of a couple uh, that was my husband or I, I think we counseled them. I think, yeah, we both did it together. Mm -hmm. And the husband uh, the wife had prayed many years for the husband's salvation. Mm -hmm. And when he gave his heart to Jesus and uh, everyone's, everyone was really excited. Yeah. Yet he started progressing. Yes. He started reading God's word. Mm -hmm. He started seeking counsel from godly men and they started speaking into his life. And he began to grow mm -hmm. and grow and grow in his understanding. Yeah. And I remember um, that now they're divorced. Yeah. Because the wife uh, did not like the growth that he was making. Yeah. And this is, reminds me of the same story in that we pray for the lost. Mm -hmm. How many times do you pray for the lost? Yes. But then when we come in, when they come in, we either reject them mm -hmm. because they don't fit the build of what we think they should look like. Right. They don't do and speak or look like what we think they should. And so we just. Yeah, our heart turns cold against him. your son. Mm -hmm. Right. You yeah. see, you noted how he rejected his yeah. brother. Yeah, he separated, separated himself. himself. He didn't say my brother, brother, the relationship. He's like, you're dead to me. And, mm -hmm. and this son of yours, like you should be angry. Like he's taking up this offense and feeling self-righteous mm -hmm. and angry because first off, he thought, you know what? If I tell the servant my frustration, it'll get back to the father. Uh, but instead of the father joining in his pity party and saying, son, you're right. He goes, no, no, son. You see, he, the father comes out and he says, listen, son, I want you to embrace my invitation. And Luke 15, 32, this encapsulates everything that Jesus is saying to the Pharisees. He's speaking to the older brothers and sisters saying, but it was fitting for us to celebrate. As my wife talked about, as we prayed with this couple for this man's salvation, it was fitting for us to celebrate. And instead of celebrating, her heart was so cold towards him. I love it. It says, celebrate and rejoice for this brother of yours was as good as dead. And he has begun to live. He was lost and has been found. You see, what Jesus is saying is this, you Pharisees are muttering and complaining, but you should be with me at this table celebrating because they were lost and they have been found. 
And he is saying to us here these 2,000 years later that our job, our the invitation that he's giving us, he says, I'm inviting you to receive lost brothers and sisters. When you look back at it, he says, for this brother of yours, this sister of yours, this is your brother, this is your sister, this isn't a servant, this isn't a hireling. In the response, the father did what? We read about it last week. He, he brought a robe to cover his son. He put sandals on his feet to redeem his son. He put a ring on his finger to say, the authority you once had, I'm returning. And he was inviting the Pharisees and inviting us and saying, hey, I want you to receive them. Forgive them. We're not talking about receiving them while they're in the journey of sin. Love them while they're there. But when they come to the end of themselves and realize it's better for me to be in my father's house, he's calling us to partner with heaven and receive our brothers and sisters. And then he's calling us to welcome home our lost brothers and sisters. You know, all over this country, we've celebrated Thanksgiving and I love the holiday. Uh, but here's the deal. You can be seated at the table with someone and not actually receive them. You could be seated next to them and not properly welcome them. So what the Lord was saying is though you're in my house and though you're here and you're always with me, I want you to do something in your heart. I want you to welcome them in your heart. I want you to receive them and to welcome them. And then the last thing he says be seen with them. Eat with our lost brothers and sisters. Don't be afraid to be in public with them. I'm not saying go and live among sinners, but I am saying when the sinner comes to the end of themselves and they come home, have your hearts outstretched. Be like the father mm -hmm. who has open hands. Be like the father who has an open heart. Be like the father who has open arms and embrace sinners when they come. Because in reality, God did that for us, that there was a time when we came to the end of ourselves mm -hmm. and our father welcomed us with open hands, with an open heart and with open arms. We want to pray for you. We want to pray for those of us that have been astray and need to come to that place where we come to the father and say, I'm at the end of myself but also for those of us who've remained home and our heart has not been right towards our brother or our sister. And so we want to pray and invite the Holy Spirit in to do a work in all of our hearts. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you as Jesus was speaking in response to the murmuring and the complaining and the unforgiveness that was in the hearts of Pharisees 2,000 years ago. The word still reigns true today, the response today. Jesus, when you sat with the disciples, you said a new command I give you, that you would love your neighbor as yourself. So, Father, I pray that over us, that as those who are listening or giving their heart to the Lord right now, that, Father, that you would prick our hearts and that we would be a part of the welcoming committee. We say, welcome home, brother. Welcome home, sister. And that we would be a part of the team that you, you've put here on this earth in these last days. That Father, we would stop praying, Lord, come now, Lord, come now. But Lord, we would say, Lord, send laborers in the midst of the harvest. That Father, it's not time for you to come because there's still work to be done. There's still people who are lost and they need to know you. So Lord, I pray that our prayer would be, Lord, use me. That we know that the harvest is right, but the laborers are few. So Lord, we pray for the laborers. We pray to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers. We pray in Jesus' name. Well, if you're listening, you're saying, I want to give my heart to the Lord. I want you to pray with me now. Say, dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. Today. Today. I give you my past. I give you my past. I give you my present. I give you my present. And I give you my future. I give you my future. Thank you. Thank you. For welcoming me home. For welcoming me home. As your son. As your daughter. As your child. As your child. We pray in Jesus' name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we so appreciate y'all connecting with us. Again, we would love to connect with you. Fill out a connection card if you haven't had a chance. Um, let us know how we can pray with you. Uh, I know that God's still doing a work in our hearts. So before we conclude, we're going to go into one last worship song. Allow the Lord to speak to your heart. And as soon as that song's done, we'd love for you to come hang out with us if you're joining live in a Zoom meeting. God bless you. Love you. Bye.